Welcome back to another Mobile Centrics Tips and Tricks. My name is Derek and today I'm going to be showing you how to fix a no signal on an Xbox Series S. Now my first impressions of no signal typically means that something is wrong with the HDMI and most of the time it's very apparent as the damage is obvious. This one however upon initial inspection the HDMI looks perfect and on the inside I found that the HDMI's pins were perfect as well so it wasn't the HDMI. The next most common thing is replacing the retimer IC otherwise known as the DisplayPort ReDriver IC and I actually found that the Series X is compatible with the Series S so went ahead and replaced that because that's typically the issue. Put it back together and still no image. Still says no signal when I plug it up. Now there's one other solution that could potentially fix this issue. Let's go through it together and see if it works. First, let me quickly show you the process of replacing the display IC. It's fairly simple. I'm gonna take my hot air rework station up to the highest temperature and basically the highest airflow because the thermal mass behind this logic board is so great that it's going to suck all the heat away, making this a hard IC to remove. After about 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds of heating it up, I'm able to get some movement out of it so I can lift it up and off the board. I'm gonna add a little bit of lower melting solder to make the installation a little bit easier. We'll get our new IC and we will install it. Having a little bit of squeeze out is completely acceptable with this repair. It's nearly impossible to have a short especially if you're using flux under this IC. In fact, you want to compress it against the board, and I like to see a little bit of squeeze out of the solder that I can then go around the border and remove the excess solder, making sure each one of those pins is making solid contact up the side of the IC. Now, given that this didn't work, the next best thing is to turn to this other IC that has control of the display. It also will take quite a bit of heat to get off, once off, I'm able to run a set of jumpers. Now here, I'm overlaying a graphic that shows where the wires need to go and what needs to connect to. And you can see here how I do that. Basically, I need to make sure that these wires connect solidly to their corresponding pads, but also don't bridge together. We don't want anything to actually carry current from one jumper to the other. It's okay if we cross lines, we just need to make sure when time comes to apply a UV mask, we can isolate the jumpers from each other, guaranteeing that we won't have any shorts in the future. This process is known as an ESD bypass. Now I spent an hour searching around on this logic board before determining to do this repair, making sure that everything else tested fine and everything that I tested seemed normal. So this is my last hope. You're my only hope. We'll add some UV mask to cover up all of the joints that we've now made and we'll cure it with a UV light. Now that that's cured, I'm gonna clean it up and let's go install it enough to test it and see if this actually works. All right, here's the moment of truth. We've got it kind of back together, hooked up and no signal, something, fan spin. Yes! Here we go! That's what I'm talking about. And there we go. It actually worked. So if you've run into an issue where it's not the HDMI and it's not the retimer IC, then give this one a go. If you've already put that much effort into a repair, this should be much more. If you found this content useful, like the video and subscribe for more future videos like this. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.